to chapter one, section two. This is adding and subtracting real numbers. They used to be called integers because they dealt specifically with positive and negative numbers. But um, if you add the number zero to that, they become all the real numbers. Real numbers, because we're starting with vocabulary, are all of the positive and negative numbers that you find on a number line. It's real numbers as opposed to imaginary numbers, which is when you divide a negative number in half and you get two halves of a negative, which are imaginary, and it's a long story and you don't have to care. We have absolute value. That is the distance from zero and it's written the absolute value of five where this is not 151. These lines are longer than taller. They go above and below the line for that five. So it's easily distinguishable from 151. Absolute value is when you were given the absolute value of five is five and the absolute value of negative five is five and you did a whole page of those and you wondered why you had to do them because they were stupid. You don't have to do them anymore. Then we have opposites. Opposites are two numbers whose sum is zero. An example of that would be four and negative four. These two numbers are opposite because when you add them together, they equal zero. These are also called the additive inverse. And this refers to the inverse property of addition that says that when you have um, a number and you add it to its opposite, it equals zero. It's one of those laws that everybody kind of understands and nobody ever remembers the names of them. So we're gonna start by reviewing the basics of adding and subtracting integers. And I know that there are a lot of ways of thinking about it. And you've probably been taught a couple of different ways to do that. But what I'd like to do is just really break it down to the, the basic rules. If the signs are the same, you add the number. And if the signs are different, you subtract the number. And really, that's all. So what we need are a few examples to try. So we have negative 3 plus negative 16. And they put this negative 16 in parentheses to separate this sign from this sign. And the only time you're gonna have two signs that are right next to each other like that is in a chapter that's teaching you positive and negative numbers. You never see it anywhere else practically and it's irritating. What I need you to understand is that if you're gonna add a positive number or you're gonna add a negative number, it doesn't matter. When you have two signs like this, you need to figure out what it is. If I'm gonna add a negative number and a negative number, this is a negative number. I am putting another negative number here, which means that disappears. So I've got a negative number and another negative number. And when I combine two negative numbers, I'm gonna get a bigger negative number. And when I combine three and 16, I'm gonna get 19. Just like if I had a positive five and a positive seven. I have two positive numbers. I'm going to add them. I'm gonna get 12. If the signs are different, negative three minus negative 16 is the worst thing you can get. I like them because I can go dink dink. Then now I have a negative number that I'm combining with a positive number. The signs are different. I'm going to subtract. And the biggest one wins. Oh, let's write that down. Biggest one wins. That means that when I subtract these two, my number is 13. And is this a positive or a negative? Well, I have a whole bunch of positive numbers and I have just a few negative numbers. That's gonna take away a few of these positive numbers. I'm gonna have a bunch of positive numbers left over. That's what the biggest one wins means. So my answer is gonna be positive 13. If I have negative 10 plus six, these signs are different. I can go back to using signs if you want. I can say that I have 10 ice cubes. It's gonna take me a while to draw 10 squares. Be patient. And I have six uh, uh, fire, campfires, whatever. I don't know, these are flames. And these cancel each other out. And I have four ice cubes left over. I have four, I have negative four left over. So that's your concept. 
But in order to get this linear, I have a negative number and a positive number I'm combining. The signs are different, so some of them are going to cancel each other out. So I have a 10 and a 6. I'm going to subtract the digits. I get 4. And the biggest one wins. I have more negatives than I have positives, so I'm going to have negatives left over. So that my answer is negative 4. So let's do this faster. Negative 6 plus 8. The signs are different. I subtract. Biggest one wins. This answer is positive. 10 minus 12. The signs are different. This is a positive number. The signs are different. So I subtract, and the biggest one wins. My answer is negative. 7 minus negative 4. Negative and a negative together cancel each other out. Minus a negative is doing a double U-turn. You go dink, dink, and now I have a positive 7 that I'm combining with a positive 4. Both my signs are the same. I add. Still, biggest one wins. This answer is going to be positive. If you have any other questions about these, we will be doing some of these drills in class, so you'll get some practice. Oh, you also have some practice homework. So what I'm going to ask you to do is do the check it out number two and number three. That gives you some good practice, and if you're having some trouble with it, you can look above at example two and example three to have you walk, have them walk you through it. Pause the video, do these, come back for answers. Here are our check it out answers. I'm hoping these are straightforward for you. If not, please find me. We do need to do some of these. We will have some practice on this. I really want this to be second nature to you. So we're gonna practice this a lot. Now we're gonna go to example four. Example four in the book, an emperor penguin stands on an iceberg that extends 10 feet above the water, and then he dives to an elevation of negative 67 feet to catch a fish. What is the total length of the penguin's dive? What they're saying is he's going down, he's got this 10 feet, and then he's gonna go down another 67 feet, which makes this problem 10 minus the negative 67 under here. And when you solve this, you go dink, dink, and this ends up 10 plus 67. And so he dives a total of 77 feet. Now, if you are a linear person, this makes sense to you. If you are a visual or a spatial person, then this makes sense to you. And you look at this problem and you say the penguin is diving this 10 feet and another 67 feet, and I'm gonna add these two together. I need you to be able to solve these problems so that it makes sense to you. This does not make sense to me. I'm not linear like this. I am visual like this. So what that also means is that when we have check it outs, I have to draw a lot of pictures because I have to create this for myself. You have to figure out the way that you learn so that you can do it correctly so that you can get the right answer. So please do no check it out number four, pause the video, come back when you're done. Okay, I have to draw an iceberg and the bottom of the ocean with a boat on it. And I know that this is 550 feet and that this is, goes down to negative 12, 468 feet. And I know that I'm going to go this distance and this distance. So he's going to do 550, nope, 550 minus negative 12, 468. And that's going to be dink, dink, and I'm going to add them together. But visually, I know I'm going this distance plus this distance all the way down to the bottom. So I'm going to add these two digits, and I get 13,000. 18 feet because word problems need word answers and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to reread the question and the question asks how many feet would it be from the top to the bottom and that is a positive number if it asked how deep did he dive or how far did he go that would be a negative number but it asks how many feet total, and that's a positive answer.
And that takes us to our homework assignment. And for section two, we're going that starts on page 17. We're going to do numbers 19 through 40b plus number 52. Most of these are basic addition subtraction problems and hopefully they'll go rather quickly and then this is your uh, multi-step deep thinking problem. All right, see you in the next video.